All these people are going to Alameda. We're in Alameda! I'm in Alameda. Who's in Alameda? Tell me if that's against the rules. I have a special surprise. Good morning. We are going to Alameda again. Actually, we're in Alameda. Hello, welcome. I am in a huge line of cars going to the Alameda Antiques Fair. It's very exciting. I'm a couple minutes late, but that's okay. Mostly that's just about making sure I get a parking spot that doesn't suck. I'm actually very excited to be back today. This is the October 1st fair. Last time I was here was, I think, March or April. So this is super exciting. I am looking for a couple random things today. I'm looking for a vanity mirror. Not a vanity mirror, a medicine cabinet. This past week, I painted my bathroom. I gave it a little bit of a refresh. It looks a ton better. And now I need more storage. And I think getting a medicine cabinet to put over my sink is gonna help a lot. I am not confident that I'll find that out here, but if I do, that'll be very exciting. I'm also looking for, I already forgot all the things I'm looking for. Also looking for maybe another lamp for my bedroom. Oh, big bump. Also looking for a desk chair. That'll be a big deal if I can find one of those. And then mostly just kind of hanging out and seeing what's good. Last time I was here, I was super surprised at how many fun little things, little treasures I found. And you know what? We're back for more. is definitely, I mean, in the name it's antiques. You can't sell anything that's under 20 years old. So I believe the category for vintage is 20 years old, 20, 25 maybe. And then to make it antique, I believe it's maybe 100 years old. I saw some really nice furniture from last time, which if you get lucky and you see the same thing twice and it's something you've been looking for, by all means, you can probably ask for a different price.
lot. It was a lot of hours. A lot of ground covered. Some good furniture seen. Got little trinkets. Got another tray. Got a lot of lampshades. What am I gonna do with all these lampshades? We'll find out. We'll, we'll, we'll put them somewhere. Yeah, it's time for, time for a beer. largest antique fair in Northern California and it's also one of the best. It's got 800 vendors which is just, it's just so many. It's so many. If you came with me last time you know that I was exhausted after that trip and this time is no different. I'm I'm pretty pooped. I'm pretty pooped. Can I say that on YouTube? Is that is that okay? I'm pretty tired. So yeah it was a good day. I will I look forward to showing you all the few things that I got. Wasn't too much. We'll see how they work out. Hello, welcome back. It's been a couple days. I have a special surprise. Look, if you all remember, I went thrifting a while back and I was at the Habitat Restore in Oakland and I found this pair of lamps and I thought they were so beautiful. However, they were priced way over my budget. I think they were $295. And at the time I was not willing to buy it. But a couple weeks ago, I was coming back down from Napa and I stopped at a Goodwill and the Napa Solano Restore, as well as one in Concord, California. And I found this, it was only $85. Now, I'm pretty sure this was one of the lamps that I saw at the Oakland Restore and they probably just move some inventory around. Anyways, I'm super excited. I now own this lamp. <laughs> I could not believe I found it. It was just over there illuminated in a corner behind a little couch. And I was like, that's my lamp, done. Picked it up, this is mine. Thank you all. I thought I would share that. Look how good it looks. Let me get closer. There is some scuffing on the top. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to care for silk. I believe this is a silk lampshade. So if anybody has any tips about taking care of lampshades or how to get those scuffs out without ruining silk, please, please, please let me know. This foot has like a pretty narrow profile. Excuse all the wires. I could technically slide this under the couch if I ever needed to. It could go easily be a bedside lamp, very narrow profile. I just absolutely love the shape, I think it's so unique, so beautiful. In that previous video, I kind of outlined that this particular lamp is, I guess, a designer lamp. And so that's why they had priced it so high at the Oakland Restore. Either way, I'm just so grateful that I saw it again. So let's take a look at what I got at Alameda this week, this month, whatever. Things are a little chaotic, excuse me. I need to kind of clean up just a little bit. I wasn't ready to pull the trigger on any larger pieces of furniture this time, just because I'm still just kind of like trying to find something that I actually love. And all the pieces that I found while they were beautiful, I wasn't confident in the purchase right away. I do get a, like a little bit of buyer's remorse sometimes, especially with more expensive items. It's one of those things where it's like, if I see it again, much like the lamp, if I see it again and it's still there, I might ask for maybe a price reduction or maybe I'll feel a little bit better about the purchase decision. Just one of those things, especially with antiques and thrifted items, typically you can't return them. So making that type of investment, I really prefer to think about before I, I just get. Art is a little bit different. Accessories are a little bit different because those can be a little bit more, you know, those can be changed out and they don't have as, as high of a cost. But anyway, we'll, we'll, keep tabs on those markets and maybe we'll find some things that we like down the line. There's always time. I don't need to get everything at once. Okay, I found a lot of lampshades. Was I going in looking for lampshades? No, I was not. Have I been wanting to replace the lampshades over the swag lights that I have over my TV? Yes, I have. I'm not very familiar with the terminology around lamps, lighting, the configurations for holding a lampshade onto a light bulb. So if I get any of that terminology wrong, I'm sorry. I'm 
I'm still learning, but I have grow lights hanging over the over the TV and they're uneven. One of them doesn't have a cover, one of them does. The one that does has this sort of like rattan boho type shade on it, which is cute and by all means it works really well. I was never able to match it properly. So now I'm kind of on the hunt for like, okay, do I get some sort of maybe metal or a colored glass just to kind of like pull in some color. We've talked about this before, I think. I also think I want to change out the wire itself. Like I don't want that sort of hemp rope anymore. So anyway, there's like lots to think about and lots to change. I went to a couple lighting stores at one point earlier in the year and they told me about you kind of like pick your shade and then build the system around that, I guess. The shade that you select determines what connectors are involved in, in hanging onto the, the light bulb. So anyways, I found some lampshades. I spotted these green lampshades almost kind of across the aisle. They were just glistening in the sun. They kind of have this interesting texture to them. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of have like almost like a red or brownish texturing, but it's kind of interesting, right? Like these were listed for 10 bucks. However, the gentleman who was selling them was like, somebody just bought the lamp bases, but they didn't want the shades. So I'll sell them to you for five bucks. So I got both of these for five bucks, which is pretty good deal. Do I have a lamp that works with this particular connector? No, I don't. He did kind of share with me though, you can get adapters, a little wire encasement around a bulb. Apparently that's an adapter and I had no idea. I always thought those were just like some sort of specific type of lamp. Again, I am very unfamiliar with lighting terminology, so please bear with me. I really like the color of these. I think it'd be interesting to bring in this sort of sagey color, but to kind of pull away from the blue a little bit as well and just have like another soft kind of natural color throughout. The sort of edging here is really intricate and, and very pretty, honestly. It's not typically my style that I go for, but it's kind of like cottagey and country aesthetic. I don't know. You know we're always mixing styles here. I do not have a single style that I gravitate towards, though I know what I like and sometimes that changes. So here we are. Maximalism, right? Okay. I'm planning to probably just figure out what to do with these. Worst case scenario, I'll just like try to sell them on Facebook Marketplace. They're in really great condition. They're a beautiful color. These could potentially be two lamps next to the bedside, or they could go in here in the living room and I could take my new lamp to the bedroom. I could also try to see if there's a way to adapt them to fit over a slack type or swag. Are they called swag? I might try to see if there's a way to adapt those lighting systems. It might even just be a matter of getting a new wire set that has the correct socket that might work for this. I don't know, that might be dreaming big, but we'll see. These are in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of crookedness happening and I'm seeing now, I think that's just from storage. Speaking of lampshades, I came across these two little miniature lampshades. Aren't they so cute? They're in really great condition too. Really nice like linen texture. Super simple connector. This just sits, just kind of clips onto the bulb. You've probably seen those before. I got this little lamp, very cute. I got this little lamp at the Oakland Vintage Market. I just been looking for like a little miniature lamp to kind of just have on a countertop or maybe tucked into a shelf somewhere. The lamp itself works really well. I've just not really been a fan of the shade, which is kind of funny considering these new green ones are basically the exact same shade. It's just a little bit more dinged up. It's got a little bit more tears and scratches on the silk and it's a cute color but the other thing is i want to kind of hide this stem i'm not entirely sure why this particular lamp design wanted to include that particular the cylinder that holds the bulb this bulb i i don't love using these types of bulbs just because they kind of get really hot so i'm also going to be looking for a new bulb for this to hopefully help with energy efficiency and all of that. I wonder if there's a way to maybe cover this like in a wallpaper or something or maybe some sort of other like washi tape or something. I don't know. I don't want to cause a fire. Or is that illegal? Are we not allowed to do that? Somebody tell me if that's against the rules. So let's give it a test. It's not bad. All right. I don't love it. Do we love it? I don't love it. Do we like this better? Maybe not. Maybe I do need sort of a fancier lampshade. I do like that it covers 
the stem a little bit more. We'll see. Either way, those could also potentially be used for like little teeny tiny sconces. Another idea for my bedroom lighting that I've had has been getting rid of the floor lamp just because I don't have a ton of floor space and doing some sconces that have like an external wire so I can just plug them into an outlet. Since I rent, I can't be doing a whole big bunch of electrical work, but I think just getting like a nice little, a nice little sconce, maybe, maybe a pair can go on either side of the headboard and then it would, it would be cute and soft lighting. I don't know, maybe. Either way, we have two more lampshades. We'll find purposes for these. The other items that I came across were basically frogs for my floral arrangements. So if you're unfamiliar with frogs, it's essentially that wire that I put into my vases. It helps hold the stems in a particular position within a vase. For example, here's an arrangement I can show you up close. You can see on the inside here, there's some wires that are kind of holding these flower stems together. Since this is such a wide mouth face and there are not a ton of items here, like when you're up close, you can see that wiring system, but that's basically holding these little branches in place so they don't all crush onto each other. So that's that's like the idea, that's the concept of a, of a frog. We'll come back to this. I know this haul is kind of all over the place, but it all kind of comes full circle. Okay, you can also do it without a vase, and that brings me to these little spiky frog systems. These are um, pretty heavy. I'd say they are, I don't know, probably two pounds each. They're metal. You can see that they're very worn out. These little spikes are what you put a stem on, and it would stand tall, or at least that's the concept. You wanna try testing it out? Let's try with one of these. So we will try this with this thicker stem. So this is a pretty woody stem, pretty thick size, but you just basically stick it on here and the stem is able to hold, hold its shape, hold its position all by itself. Let's grab another flower. So this guy is gonna have a thinner stem. Let's see how this does. So that one kind of went through the stem, but it is still holding. So you could basically create an arrangement using this type of frog system. And all you're doing, you barely have to even pierce the stem on here. Then the idea kind of is you vary your heights a little bit and it creates this sort of abstract, ouch, okay, that, this stem might be a little bit too narrow. I'd probably recommend doing this with like a thicker stemmed, thicker stemmed flower. Let's see what this one does. Yeah, so kind of like that. They're able to hold their shape without even being in a vase. It's pretty cool, right? It's kind of like a unique abstract way of arranging flowers. Have this oval shape, have this circle, and then there was also a container. This little jar also has another circular one on the inside. So this one kind of came together as a little set. These can easily be slipped into any of my other different, maybe shallower vases and like flower pots that I have that don't have a drainage hole. That's the idea with this. So these were the three, this one, I thought was such a pretty design. This one was made in Italy. So I thought that was pretty special. Still an interesting concept for arrangements and finding new ways to put things together and, whoop, and figure out, you know, just other options to have. Maybe this type does better with like the shorter cuts. So sometimes when I'm arranging flowers, I have a lot of leftover little tiny pieces that don't really have a, a home in a larger vase. So maybe this is an opportunity to kind of like test that out a little bit with like a little, a little short guy. Cute. The last couple things that I got, little tiny wood, little wood container. I don't know, it's got a lid, it's cute. We like little tiny stuff, right? You could put rings in here, um, jewelry. He's, he's just a little little guy. We like, we like miniatures. We like the miniatures. And then the last guy, another tray. Can you believe it? I know. So I was thinking with this tray, I do love my teak bowl that I have in the kitchen right now. I love its structure. I like the sort of angularity. It's a little bit tall for the placement that I have it in currently. Right now it's positioned on a shelf. It's just, it's a little bit tall for that shelf height. Um, yes, I could definitely change the height of the shelf, of course, but I don't want to. But what I can do is have a more shallow tray to put those fruits and whatever onto this so it's a little bit easier to reach into. This is only 12 bucks. I mean, it's kind of kind of dinged up in a little couple spots. There's a couple cracks in the side. So this could probably easily be epoxied or do some, just do some simple wood glue in here just to kind of bring those, those back together. The bottom looks a mess. I'm pretty sure this tray was probably like Lazy Susan. It kind of looks like a bottom, like a bottom was ripped off of here. You can see the other wood 
pieces and then these little feet were added because they wanted to just have this as a tray totally fine i don't really care about that but that does sort of bring up this could possibly be a lazy susan again you might be able to find some sort of I don't even know what you call those, um, those bases that can spin and figure out a way to adhere one again so that this can become a spinning tray again. So that was, this was Alameda. As I mentioned, absolutely obsessed with the lamp. Just look at it every single day. Love it. I don't know what else to say about it. It's brought like a nice moodiness to the living room, especially in the evenings. Let's turn it on. You want to turn it on? I've noticed that just having that shade alone and not having the sort of hand lights that I had previously has helped with just getting tired in the evening. See? Isn't that cute? Isn't that nice? It's got a nice warmness. I can probably change out the bulb to make it a little bit brighter. It's been really nice to have. I think it's really pretty when it's on. I think when it's off, it looks kind of like, eh, it looks, it kind of blends into the curtains, which is fine. Not a big deal, but I've really enjoyed having it. So got that at the Concord Habitat for Humanity Restore. The Napa Restore, I found this green vase that I mentioned. Super cute, little square guy, you know, nice color. Love him. And I also found another, another lamp. This is totally just the lamp haul. My bad guys. Mostly I was drawn to the shape of this one. I liked the, just the, having the white because my walls aren't white. I kind of need something to contrast against the sort of blueness. Probably hard to see in this frame, but the walls are kind of more of a blue gray. So this was like 10 bucks. The lampshade itself is pretty crappy. It's like super scuffed up and kind of dented like super bad. I was trying to get a deal and I was like, well, if I take off the shade and leave the bulb with you guys, can I get a couple dollars shaved off? And the woman checking me out was like, no, that would just be considered a donation back to the store. And I'm like, all right, well, a donation to the trash because like shade is unusable. But then I started thinking, duh, you can just cover it. So this might be a fun little, little lampshade makeover. We might do that together. I've seen other people do it. Thanks YouTube, I've seen other people do it. And I figure, you know, it can't be that hard. Probably just some fabric adhesive, a nice pattern fabric or something. I'd probably like to contrast the white base a little bit more. Maybe bring in some reds, love that. But I really like the shape of it. It's not necessarily a circle, but it's also not like a perfect cube. It's kind of softened. Future project, love that for us. And the very last thing, this was $2 at Goodwill. I think it's kind of the cutest thing. Here's little illustrations of the San Francisco cable cars. And of course, the mat is like an orange terracotta, so what better home to bring it into than yours truly? Cute little picture, a little, little art. We like a little, a little, little art guy. We'll find a home for it among all the other arts. Yeah, that's all I really have. I think next month I already have some plans. I have a friend visiting that first weekend, so that probably won't probably won't be going to that fair, but maybe in December we'll go back. Maybe we'll find some more treasures. We like treasures. Thank you all for joining. Thanks for joining me at the fair again. And I hope you enjoyed this haul. It was it was an interesting one, very unexpected, but I'm pretty into everything I got, so that's exciting, right? I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, look, the moon is out. The sun is turning me orange. Try it again. <laughs>